Good morning, everyone. So it's eight o'clock in the morning, and we're now streaming live for our eighth uh, DLS ULASAL Sustainability Lecture Series. This Sustainability Lecture Series is an initiative of De La Salle University in cooperation with the International Association of De La Salle Universities. These monthly talks are meant to engage the global La Salle community in responding to the UN Sustainable Development Goals and Pope Francis Laudato Si encyclicals. So we are already now on our eighth lecture series. To introduce our speaker for this morning, I would like to call the director of the Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research, Professor Alvin Kulaba. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, evening probably in other parts of the world. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kathleen Viso, our uh, host uh, for this lecture series. And of course, uh, brothers, uh, the Sal brothers around the world, <clears throat> uh, Chancellor Emeritus, uh, Dr. Carmelita Kibenko, Professor uh, Dr. Raymond uh, Gerard Artan, our Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation of De La Salle University, colleagues uh, at De La Salle University in the academe and uh, you know, other sectors. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Yes, uh, as uh, Professor Avis has mentioned, the Center for Engineering and Sustainable Development Research hosts this uh, La Salle uh, sustainability, sustainability Lecture Series. And uh, CESDAR uh, you know, has been established back in 2003, primarily to uh, undertake studies uh, that relates to the sustainable development uh, you know, goals and over 6,000 publications in Scopus and high impact journals have been published by its numerous uh, you know, scientists and researchers uh, at the center. Today, we have another distinguished speaker who's going to speak on another interesting topic uh, related to sustainable stormwater runoff management using low impact development. Our distinguished speaker, holds a BS degree at the University of Santo Tomas in 2006, and a master's of science degree in Gongju National University in 2009, and a PhD at the same university in 2012 in the field of civil and environmental engineering. From 2012 to 2016, she was a research fellow working in LID a slash GI Research Center in Chonan, South Korea. Since 2017, he has been appointed as an associate professor and head of the Hydraulics and Water Resources Engineering Division in the Civil, uh, Civil Engineering Department at De La Salle University, Manila. Her research interests include environmental engineering and water resources management, particularly water quality, diffused pollution, and stormwater characterization and management in urban, agricultural, industrial, and transport-related land uses using low-impact development, green stormwater infrastructure, or GSI, and nature-based solutions. She currently serves as board member of the International Water Association Diffuse Pollution and Eutrophication Specialist Group and Editor of the Journal of Wetlands Research. She was awarded as 2019 Outstanding Young Scientist by the National Academy of Science and Technology and in 2020 as an Outstanding Asian Science Diplomat. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome our distinguished speaker, uh, Dr. Marla Redilias. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to Dr. Redilias. Thank you very much, Dr. Alvin. Thank you. And good morning, everyone. Good morning to all of you in Zoom and also if you are watching live via YouTube. Thank you so much for inviting me in this sustainability series. I'm so excited <laughs> to talk about my research. I've been uh, talking about this research for uh, since 2017 when I came back to the Philippines and this is uh, my first time in this uh, in the LSE uh, 
sustainability series. Okay, so uh, allow me to share my screen. Please, yes. So I hope you are seeing my screen already. May I ask if my audio is clear? Yes, yes. yes Before yes, I continue. Okay, yeah. okay thank Good. you. All right, so uh, I hope I can finish this within the given time. <laughs> I prepared uh, uh, quite a, a few slides for, for you. So I decided to talk about uh, sustainable stormwater management using low impact development. So low impact development is relatively new. It started in the 1990s. Actually, this concept was first uh, established in in Prince George County in Maryland. And ever since uh, various states in the uh, first in the United States are trying to apply and adopt LID. And then also many countries in the world, mostly developed countries are also uh, uh, incorporating LID in their in their design, especially in land use planning, in planning their cities. Uh, in the UK, they, they have different uh, terms, but the the scope and the concepts principles are similar. So in UK, they, they have what we call sustainable urban drainage system or SUDS. In Australia, they, they have W SUDS, uh, water sensitive urban design. And then also in China recently, I think around siguro mga five years pa lang, five years or less, uh, no, around siguro mga less than 10 years, they have also their sponge cities concept and then other other terms related to LID, uh, nature-based solutions are becoming uh, are the trends also becoming uh, the trending uh, management for 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 runoff recently. And then aside from that, uh, also better uh, best management practices, green infrastructure. Ayon. So very a lot of very similar terms and topics, but the principles are the same. So my goal for today is to uh, mezzo, mezzo very focused, very specific. So I put here stormwater runoff management because I believe that it's it's a very good opportunity, you know, to discuss this topic that is really not very popular in our in our country. So actually most of the LID uh, projects are being uh, uh, are we can see LID being implemented in most developed countries, but in developing countries such as ASEAN countries and also like like including the Philippines. So this is not re yet highlighted, you know, uh, probably because of the priorities in in terms of environmental management. So this LID uh, is related to you can see here the six sustainable development goals. So sustainable goal number six for clean water and sanitation, sustainable development goal number nine, industry innovation and infrastructure, 11, sustainable cities and communities, 13, climate action, 14, life below water, 15, life on land. So it's connected with the six LL, um, um, sustainable development goals. And if we can you know, fully implement and apply LID in planning our future cities, we could target this specific goals at the same time. So let's uh, begin. <laughs> All right. So for the learning objectives, uh, hi I highlighted five here. So at the end of this lecture, we should be able to identify key issues and environmental impacts concerning urbanization and climate change, which both are the driving factors in LID. Number two, provide an overview of the unique philosophy going to introduce LID principles, concepts, mechanisms, processes, and practices, and some LID tools that we could apply. And then the third one discuss about the watershed uh, ecological processes vital to protecting receiving waters and aquatic living resources. Next is to understand the technical, practical, and economic considerations and limitations, as well as challenges uh, involved in LID versus in comparison with conventional systems. And then lastly, uh, I hope we can also tackle some approaches and challenges needed to be addressed in order to adopt LID in our country's very unique geology, hydrology, and ecosystem. So let's begin. 
Okay, so I would like to introduce um, Stormwater Runoff because that's the main... I can hear some noise. What is that? Okay. Sorry. Okay. So uh, let us uh, identify and uh, from this diagram what is or where is stormwater runoff in our urban water cycle. Okay. So here um, we can see the first okay, system, which is the water supply. So we all know that we can get our water sources, our water supply from our surface waters, fresh water sources. So sometimes we can also get it from salt water, but most of the time, that's, this is our choice. No, your first uh, is our surface water and also groundwater sources. So from our water supply, water sources, so that that water uh, directly goes to water treatment plant, must go to water treatment plant because the water here in our surface waters should be Cheated. No, we, we cannot as, assume that this one is free of any sort of pollutants or contaminants. So we have to treat. After that, it can be distributed. The, the clean water can be distributed, uh, the potable water supply to urban centers, to people for use for many beneficial purposes. And then after using the untreated water goes to the wastewater treatment plants uh, for treatment of used water and for the removal of, you know, uh, many contaminants and pollutants from human use before discharging it back to the river. So here is the typical urban cycle. But what um, we are often neglect neglecting is he is this one, the stormwater runoff. So you can see here the, 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 the dark colored arrows. So this one is called the stormwater runoff. When uh, does this uh, occur or generate. So this stormwater runoff comes from rainfall. So during the dry days, all of these systems, all of the systems are working, even though during dry conditions. But as soon as rain uh, gets into our land, there will be what we call runoff. So runoff is generated, and it comes from many sources. So it can, it can come from the forest area, from the agricultural area, from the land, anywhere that has, you know, um, direct uh, contribution to um, increase in water on our surface. That is what we call the stormwater runoff. And uh, this stormwater runoff often goes to our river without any prior treatment, unlike this wastewater and the water here. So in that case, we need to do something. We need to do uh, some steps or measures in order to manage the stormwater and all. Why? Because as you can see here, stormwater comes from many various sources. So because of that, it could uh, possibly cause uh, pollution to our water supply. Because at the end of the day, all of this, the water that's circulating in our watershed goes back to our water supply and if we do not do anything about it our source or clean water source could be our source could be polluted and where can we get our clean water so that's the question so sustainable urban water is defined as all urban waters not only from the source and this and this but everything no all even the stormwater and of everything used and managed by waterwise communities in cities connected to their basins Built in a way that is sensitive to water issues so that short-term risks are minimized, resources are preserved, and livability is increased to water-sensitive design and regenerative water services for all. So that is the definition of the urban water. So it, it's all of the water in our city. Okay, so for the key environmental issues, I would like to highlight here about land use change and urbanization. Here on this uh, figure, you can see the comparison between the land use in the year 1989 versus the year 2010. So I would like to foc I would like to focus here on this color color orange, uh, uh, which are what we call as built up areas. So these are some of the developments, specifically the uh, construction projects and other land use uh, change that we uh, did over the past uh, years around 20 years, two decades. So there is an increase in land use changes, specifically urban areas. Okay, so you can see here, and 
some parts are some parts of the agriculture area were reduced. So the increase of this, the increase of this uh, urbanization, what we call urbanization or land use change, caused several uh, problems. So number one is what we call uh, storm water runoff because of the presence of this impervious surfaces because we are converting our natural land into built environment meaning we are covering the land okay instead of the soil natural ground cover vegetation and forest we are converting it into concrete pavements asphalt any impervious surface so that could you know result in an increased runoff because once the rain hits the land so it will carry everything all on the surface even all of those particulates pollutants that's that's on the surface so here you can see what we call a phenomenon uh, that is called first flush so this is what uh, the initial runoff looks like so the very beginning around 30 minutes to one hour we can see a very polluted runoff that is because uh, after uh, it rains, it uh, the the runoff, the water, uh, the, the the particles on the surface of the land are washed off by runoff. So this stormwater runoff first flush is considered as one of the major sources of what we call non-point source pollution or diffuse pollution, meaning the pollution that comes from many various sources that could possibly degrade our water quality in urban areas. So the population is actually one of the many factors that are increasing this, what we call urbanization. But aside from that, oh, also the reduction in uh, natural covers uh, is one factor. So as you can see here in the hydrologic balance, uh, comparison between the natural ground cover and impervious surface. So the, the higher the impervious surface, meaning the more developments, the more uh, cover, cover impervious cover that we uh, always continuously build because we want to urbanize, it means the, the more runoff we could generate. The greater the flood, uh, flush floods in urban areas, localized flooding, also the greater amount of pollu pollution. So as you can see, here on the graph so this one shows the cod and the bod levels from 1995 to 2010 in one uh, lake in south korea uh, as you can see the range uh, the levels of bod are decreasing the biological oxygen demand while the chemical oxygen demand which includes all of all of the chemical in organic chemicals and all other pollutants are that are not degradable such as metals or heavy metals this one is increasing so the government in uh south korea they know they they were looking for some ways on how to reduce the cod and they found out that the that the increase in runoff because of urbanization is the main uh the, the main cause why because for the past 30 years or more than 33 decades the Korean government has uh, has built several wastewater treatment facilities. So for the treatment of point source pollution or wastewater. So in that case, the BOD decreased. But the those uh, inorganic chemicals and other toxic substances like heavy metals and others are contributing to the increase in COD. So this uh, increase in impervious surface are uh, this increase in impervious surface is also decreasing the stream water quality. So as you can see here for the normal lake, okay, so this, uh, we can experience this if uh, the impervious is uh, still around uh, less than 40% or 25%. But as we keep on urbanizing and covering our land, more nutrients, more pollutants are entering our water bodies our surface waters in in that uh, and, and as a result it could uh, probably increase this what we call algal bloom or eutrophication so aside from this also the suspended load 
from different land uses, especially those in construction sites, are also contributing to uh, what we call uh, increase in non-point source pollution. So not only that, also climate change plays an important uh, role. So climate change is increasing the frequency, the intensity, and magnitude of disasters related to uh, natural disasters or water disasters uh, that could potentially uh, harm or uh, decrease uh, or increase the property and economic losses. So this climate change impact, such as the increase in uh, temperature, increase in sea level, and then also extreme precipitation and heat waves, these are all part of the impacts of urbanization and increase in population. So why? how do we incorporate this climate change into the decision making? What are those steps we could do? So in terms of uh, management of our water sources. So here we can see the first primer for uh, increase in temperature and extreme events. So we can propose uh, some kind of storage like big dams or big reservoirs or possible aquifer storage to so we can get some water underground so maybe individual storage also such as rain barrels which are less expensive but this uh, is considered not really sustainable so the second primer here is encouraging low impact development or lid so this lid could support uh in uh, reducing the heat stress also in uh, water control and supply by reducing this storm runoff on our uh, urbanized land use, uh, urbanized lands, and also provide an alternative water source that we can uh, probably uh, use later on for other purposes, and then creating or restoring our ecological system that has been loss because of urbanization the third primer is more on encouraging reclaimed water but this one is more challenging so that's why we focus here on low impact development so the motivation in doing lid is uh, of course everyone wants to live in a sustainable city or a livable city in the future because we are all connected so uh, the watersheds are connected with each other. It's our responsibility to build better communities. And uh, also, it's also part of our uh, laws. And aside from that, of course, the uh, uh, low impact development, as I mentioned in the very beginning, could help target uh, to achieve these following goals as uh, proposed by the United Nations, the SDGs. So this was set up in 2015 and uh, is uh, parang, uh, targeted to finish or accomplish ad until 2030. So clean water and sanitation. So our goal is to uh, provide clean water sources. So that's why uh, to be able to do that, we have to uh, treat the stormwater runoff before going to our before discharging it to our rivers. Second one is for innovation in infrastructure because uh, since LID is helping in our uh, climate change uh, impacts or helping the climate change impacts, so LID could help build uh, resilient cities and communities. So for innovation in infrastructure, also sustainable cities and communities, cl climate change, healthy oceans, and sustainable ecosystem. So yeah. All right. So now this um is the LID concept. So here I compare the natural environment and the urban environment. So as you can see, this uh figure shows the hydrological balance or water balance between these two types of environment. So for the natural environment, uh, there is uh, around forty percent evaporation, while in the urban environment, around uh, thirty percent. And then we can see the very big difference in terms of runoff and infiltration. Actually, this runoff and infiltration both um, contrib contribute uh, to the total runoff. So we have the precipitation from the 100% uh, 
40% goes uh, back to our atmosphere, around 50% infiltrates, and this 50% uh, could uh, lead to our aquifers for groundwater recharge, while around only 10% is runoff, directly goes to our water waterways and water bodies. While in the urban environment, okay, so because we cover the land, with um, buildings and impervious surface. So we are reducing the ability of our natural soil or natural land to infiltrate water. So in that case, most of the water is being run off instead of infiltrating uh, underground. So that this could limit also uh, the ability of groundwater recharge for groundwater recharge, meaning uh, we could potentially save more water in a, a natural environment, but in an urban environment, yeah, that's 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 the the problem. So the LID concept is very simple. Okay, so even if we're living in an urban environment, we have to make sure that we mimic in our urban environment those mechanisms that uh, are present in the natural environment. Meaning, we try to increase the evaporation. We try to reduce the runoff and try to increase the infiltration, like to this level. So that's that's what uh, uh, the LID, that is the LID concept. So uh, definition of LID. What is LID? So this is an ecologically based stormwater management approach, favoring soft engineering to manage rainfall on site through a vegetated treatment network. So the goal of LID is to sustain a site's pre-development hydrologic regime by using techniques that infiltrate, filter, store, and evaporate stormwater runoff close to its source. Contrary to conventional pipe and pond conveyance infrastructure, or this is what we call sometimes gray infrastructure, the channels run off elsewhere to pipes, catchment basins, and curves and gutters. LID remediates polluted runoff to a network of distributed treatment landscapes. So there are some important keywords which uh, I want I want to highlight in the next coming slides. So LID is considered as uh, it's a land use land use based planning uh, a, a land use based planning approach uh, wherein we wanted to maintain that natural hydrology despite the we have you know, enormous impervious surfaces. So yeah, because the purpose is to mitigate those adverse impacts of runoff and specifically non-point source pollution or those that comes from many various sources. So this also low impact development favors what we call soft engineering uh, and it reduces uh, reduces flood and water pollution considering many processes. So when we talk about uh, soft engineering, we can uh, compare it with what we call natural system. So soft engineering in, in, involves uh, this soils, plants, and microbes okay, in order to treat uh, polluted water. But this one, this natural uh, system is more land in intensive. So this is going to be the challenge. So this one. However, in comparison with conventional systems, okay, conventional use systems use a lot of fossil fuel. And uh, not only that, uh, also conventional systems, not, not, ayan, uh, con, con, uh, is highly dependent on energy energy and materials. So if we're going to adapt this, what we call natural systems or low impact development, uh, no fossil fuel energy and low cost in construction, and at the same time, maintenance, operation and maintenance. So this is uh, what is being promoted by LID. So it's more, it's more like soft engineering. The idea behind the soft engineering principle is that uh, soft engineering principles offer ecosystem services like atmospheric regulation, climate regulation, disturbance regulation, water regulation, water supply, erosion control and sediment retention, soil formation, nutrient cycling, waste treatment, 
pollination, species control, refugia and habitat, food production, raw material production, genetic resources, recreation, cultural and enrichment of all of the ecosystem services. So these are provided by LID. So the hard engineering approach is uh, to dis describe it more clearly includes the use of engineered pipes or water systems canals in order to discharge or to catch those runoff and then later on transfer it to uh, other sites until it reaches the uh, final water bodies or destination. So in contrary to this hard engineering, the soft engineering uh, consists of uh, plants and soil. So they act all together in order, more on biological methods in order to uh, treat uh, the stormwater runoff. So this soft engineering is what we call the new management appro approach that metabolizes pollutants on site. So we can see here the many different uh, mechanisms. So maybe you're going to ask if we can apply this, what we call soft engineering, not only in urban area, also in rural area. Yes, the answer is yes. So even if we believe that in uh, or rural areas where population are not very uh, dense, so still, we can we can utilize this what we call soft engineering principle. So we can use it both in uh, highly urbanized and also less urbanized areas. Why? So let's look at these concepts of LID. So there are uh, essentially four concepts. So it includes the first one is the functioning concept, wherein the goal is to maximize the ecological benefits, like rainwater stormwater design. Uh, and then decentralizing optimizes the full carrying capacity of a site and then networking. So to avoid systematic failure, facility redundancy is important. So this uh, roots in a network reduces the effects of gaps, increasing performance, in general levels of service, intelligencing, integrated management should be needed. So sometimes we call it a smart design, a smart construction and a smart management. So like we are doing like some kind of like uh, networking. So the there are five main principles of LID. So the first one is in order to do this one, uh, stormwater should, should also be included in the planning because most of the time uh, when we talk about stormwater, uh, we usually uh, tend to say, that stormwater is is okay, so it's it's clean or it's it's not gonna be really, uh, it's it's not a disturbance or, in other cases, stormwater just you know um, we don't care about the quality of stormwater, just the, the the amount or the volume, so that's that's the problem. So stormwater should also be included in the planning processes. The second one is runoff prevention. So most of the time we are blaming maybe the nat nature because of the tremendous amount of rainfall that we receive. Sometimes it's not balanced. Sometimes it's too much. Sometimes it's too little. So we are, uh, we have to focus on storm, on storm water runoff prevention. So in that case, uh, one of the parang easier way is to uh, minimize that, that impervious cover. So parang kasi, uh, if we're designing our our streets, our roads, but we want it really uh, wide, yeah. And so narrower roadways, uh, I'm not sure if it is it's gonna work, but yes. So that's that's the idea. But there are other alternatives on that. So yeah, we focus on minimizing those what we call impervious, or if we cannot completely minimize, at least we disconnect. So we 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 shouldn't do like um, a very long wide wide road, like a one-way road, yun, parang we have to think about how to disconnect those mm -hmm. impervious surfaces. Next is, so uh, this is one of the, this is one of the important thing, aside from minimizing the impervious cover, the treat the stormwater close to the source. 
Kasi most of the time, we are applying what we call the regional control. Regional control means we collect everything from everywhere and then uh, the last, the last, ano, parang uh, last stage is after collecting everything and then the retreat. Okay? But LID is what we call a source control or a site control. Meaning, uh, where the runoff generates, start, when the, where the runoff starts, um, to generate pa lang, so we control it right away from the moment that it's generated. So it means we are um, targeting the the problem itself, the actual problem, so which is right at that very source. Parang ganun. So uh, this is also applicable, this LID, in what we call a treatment train of small structure, meaning, so if, if, if the 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 source parang it's not enough so we can you know continue to connect more lids no until we can treat everything okay so yun yung uh, concept niyan and then create multifunctional landscapes so the landscapes should have also many purposes not only one so typically when we say landscaping uh we uh, think of like aesthetic purpose diba parang landscapes are only for aesthetic aesthetic purposes but lid gives them function no, to lid so we can give uh, our landscapes function so yun yung uh, idea doon so not only for aesthetic purposes or one a single uh, purpose and then lastly is to educate and maintain principles so this lid will not work like many other technologies or like in um infrastructure we call it green infrastructure uh it won't work without maintenance so we have to also consider doing maintenance work because yun yung naging problem of lids in many countries like after they build the lid they just let it there parang without uh, checking inspecting yun so maintenance is is surely uh important in lid operations Okay, so let's look at the difference or the uh, approach, LID co approach in comparison with the old approach. So the old approach just conveys all of this storm water into sewers or drainage channels. And then sometimes meron tayong end uh, of pipe pond approach at the end. We collect it using detention pond or retention basins and then to final discharge. So that's the old approach. The LID approach comes before conveying the water to sewers or drainage channels because this happens at the source palang. so we call it hydrologic modification so that's lid or green infrastructure so by means of infiltration retention also recovery and reuse so if we allow um, lid to function so it could uh, possibly result into many benefits like not only for water quantity and water quality, but also for like biodiversity, resources, recreation, and amenities. So this one is the conventional water cycle system, urban water cycle system. You can see from our drinking water sources, okay? So we get water from here. We treat it in water treatment plants after using urban areas, wastewater treatment plants, and then discharge again. So that's the uh, very... Um, short circuited urban water cycle system but as you can see here this is the what we call green urban water cycle system so we have to incorporate lid okay so from the drinking water sources so ganun pa din. but the green uh infrastructure or the low impact development extends young services why because it provides groundwater infiltration some of portion of the runoff should be should go back Sa ilalim, uh, underground. Later on, it will join yung uh, stream, uh, streams natin and uh, water, uh, surface waters. You know, some of it can be uh, transpirated and also or evaporated and then discharge. And the main idea is that the discharge is already clean or um, like within the standards of the source, drinking, wa drinking water sources. So let's show some examples of LID. So here, uh, you can see two photos. So the, on the left side, parang it looks similar, ba? Both of these photos. So this left side is what we call left photo shows a conventional landscaping. Wherein, we can see it everywhere. 
even in our university, the ba in the LSU, we can see and anywhere in the in the metro, you can see here uh, many uh, landscapes. So, but this one is uh, targeting only aesthetic aesthetic functions, parang ganon. And siguro very minimal in terms of evapor evapotranspiration, many very minimal effects in urban heat island. But this one is what we call LID. So this is a, a rain garden, and this is uh, providing uh, functions to our landscape. Okay, so how? Yon. So yun yung question. So how do we LID? So basically, uh, we convert gray to green infrastructure. Gray infrastructure means everything that you see that's gray color, like asphalt, roofs, additional engineered uh, flooding solutions, pipes, um, big roads, and sewers from gray to green. When we say from gray to green, we do not uh, say that completely we remove everything. Okay, we LID uh, tends to supplement intends to supplement this gray infrastructure. So instead of like us uh, all gray, so we make something green. Okay, like this is street trees, uh, green living roofs, sod swales, natural flood management, permeable paving. And then incorporating water storage and multifunctionals like swales and wetlands, okay, that could provide both the aesthetic aesthetic benefits, recreational opportunities, and also wildlife. So here we can let's take a look at the mechanisms of LID. So here we we follow what we call three S's approach. Three S's means we start with slowing the runoff. So as soon as um, the runoff starts after rainfall. The first thing to do is to slow it down. So in slowing it down, we provide flow controls. So like this, okay? And then after that, uh, we can do uh, some detention and retention. So re detention and detention differs uh, because detention yeah, allows a temporary storage of stormwater runoff. So like in depressed areas uh, to reduce the, the peak flow. And then... Uh, retention demand, on the other hand, allows sedimentation. So basically, for detention, the goal is just to reduce the flow flow rate. Whereas in retention, we provide additional time for the sedimentation of particles. So that's the first step in uh, wastewater treatment. So we have to separate the big particles or the, the solid particles through settling. So this one uh, is followed by what we call uh, filtration. So filtration meaning using uh, fil uh, filter media. So some of some of those parang ran or particles na uh, that are not settled. Probably mga small part, smaller particles, mga dissolved particles could be um, filtered. Uh, sometimes we use uh, many different filter types of filter media or plants. We can also use that porous media or sand or other uh, man-made filters. After filtration, it will uh, go to, uh, it needs to be infiltrated because we cannot infiltrate polluted runoff. We have to protect our groundwater sources. So we have to infiltrate uh, clean runoff. Na. So infiltration helps in recharging our groundwater and also reducing the quantity or the amount of runoff. And then finally, the last part, is um, this one uh, goes to like underground soaking and as well as the plants. So the plants can utilize. So the plants can utilize by means of uptaking some of the nutrients, excess nutrients that are present in stormwater runoff. And some of the plants also uh, have the ability to uptake even yung mga toxic heavy metals and other chemicals and organic chemicals from uh, the runoff them. And provide evaporation or evapotranspiration, okay? So in uh, as a result, when we uh, prov uh, we use LID, we uh, were able to reduce the amount of runoff by means of infiltrating it underground instead of discharging it on the surface and then also reducing it by means of evaporation and as well as treatment. So we can provide treatment. So those... Uh, pollutants that are generated from this impervious surfaces could could now be reduced to LID. 
Okay, so there are many different LID technologies available. So it depends on the purpose and it depends on the uh, local uh, climate, local pollution condition on the site because some areas are really clean, you know, especially those areas that are well maintained by street sweeping practices, uh, those areas that uh, do not generate excessive pollution. Okay, one of the factors that contribute to the increase in storm water and pollutants is the transportation um yung mga related vehicles so let's say for example yung mga cars so yung mga tire tire wares brake pads and also even the gasoline no yung um if the gasoline is 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 leaded gasoline that could also result so the transportation if it is really heavy that daily traffic is heavy on the side so there there's a possibility that more uh non point source pollution uh, could be generated on those sites. So ito yung matrix that shows the mechanical, from mechanical to biological, de depends on the type of treatment and increasing level of volume reduction. So it could vary from porous infiltration pipes, uh, detention to detention reservoir until stormwater wetland. So those, as you can see here, those uh, technologies or tools that involve a lot of vegetation that includes uh, more lands then could uh, uh, be more efficient and effective uh, in treatment and management of stormwater runoff. So we can incorporate LID everywhere because LID is a source or site control uh, treatment technology. So we even in a in a small campus or university or small neighborhood, so we can incorporate various LIDs depending on the the source, the runoff source. So like, like permeable pavement, you know, uh, and then storm uh, disconnected impervious surfaces, grass whales here, you know, beside the road, also rain gardens here or rain barrels, a house, um, and many others. So yun yung LID. So let's look at the different LID tools that we can uh, design. So here we can see vegetated swales, uh, bioretention, uh, here we can see uh, bioswales, stormwater planter box. So sana yung mga trees natin on the roads, meron siyang kanya-kanyang box like this because we can make use of the runoff to water this our vegetation. Diba? Typically kasi when we have landscapes, we have to take care of our landscape every day. Like we have to water it. And most of the time, the water that we use uh, is from, you know, uh, water treatment, diba? Yung may mga iba, iba nga may chlorine pa, diba? And we give it to our plants. So now, we can make use of runoff no, to water them. So they can make use of th those uh, runoff water. Okay, so tree box filter and then permeable pavement. Here you can see storm uh, water wetlands, constructed wetlands, rain barrels. So rain barrels and cisterns, this is for the collection of runoff. And then underground storage, also green roofs. And then for for roads, so we can combine also those LIDs if we, we have that space. It, cons it will probably consume some space. Uh, but we do not need to cover everything with LID, okay? Just to... Uh, manage this particular area. So this one is for parking lots. Instead of everything is only pavement, let's allow some space for like storing of runoff. Anyway, this uh, has some depth, kaya it can store uh, enough volume to cover the entire uh, catchment. So here, rain garden also. These are some of the examples of uh, LIDs in Korea, some of our projects. Vegetated strips on the beside the highway, infiltration trench under the bridge because you know the bridge is highly highly impervious. Like everything is pavement, the ba? Everything is concrete. So once na it rains on the bridge, so it will be collected really fast and the water will flow really fast on those and on those sur surfaces. So that's why we have to collect some water first, reduce the flow, and then later on, um, discharge. Okay, parang ganyan. So beside the roads here. And this one is an infiltration trench beside the road. So this one is the highway. 
this is highway number one in South Korea. So from this one, this one is my MS thesis topic. So I studied this infiltration trench for almost two years. So I did some monitoring work here. So the idea is that uh, before this ran off from this uh, road, before it, it's discharged to this stream, so it enters this what we call infiltration trench. So reducing the flows, and then some of this uh, runoff is infiltrated here, and then uh, discharge. So this one shows the con construction. This slide shows the construction photos on, on, of the trench. Ayan. So there are uh, construction works in this, like this. So pipe installation, compaction, and ito yung trench cross section. And then the treatment performance. So by uh, providing the infiltration trench, it's it, it, uh, the, the, the trench was able to reduce that suspended solids around 87%, BOD, COD, DOC, nitrogen, and phosphorus, even lead and zinc. Yon. So that's the removal. And this are, uh, also this one is one of our projects in South Korea. I was involved in monitoring this constructed wetland. So this one, um, uh, this one serves as parang storage for temporary storage for excess runoff from the stream. Kasi may stream dito. During rain events, it captures some portion of the stream, some part, para hindi mag magproduce ng downstream flooding. At the same time, it's handling yung uh, wastewater discharge from the livestock piggery. Kasi may piggery dito. So some of the parang uh, wastewater generated, even treated na, secondary effluent, it's really still uh, less than the standard or below the standards of the river. So before discharging that livestock wastewater, uh, it enters muna this wetland and then treated and then yun, after that discharge. So it functions uh, during both dry and wet days. Okay, and then also here are some of the LIDs that we piloted in our campus in South Korea. So all of these LIDs are all patented. So patented, kaya may mga name sala actually. So we started doing this kind of research to investigate the performance of LID and also to optimize because we wanted to uh, achieve yung cost-effective design. So that's the goal. So we did some monitoring, storm, storm event monitoring. So this, uh, what runoff look like, looks uh, looks like after it rains. So I know, siguro nakikita, you are, you're familiar with Korean parang scenes, ba, in K-dramas. But you know, even if um, ganun siya ka-clean on uh, during dry days, pag umulan, you can see the presence of like this oil and grease. Parang, it, this is not visible during dry conditions, but we can observe during the monitoring of runoff. So this one is the first flash. This is before entering the LID, and then this one is after. So uh, we can see the reduction in first flash during the very initial part. Yan. So ito yung uh, before and after photos of our LIDs in Korea. So this one naman, uh, all of these sites were part of my PhD naman na study. Okay, so this one, yeah, we can see here the filter media. So this L, uh, particular LID is composed of sev three sections. So meron for sedimentation, for filtration, and also for final discharge. Ayan. So before kasi the water on this road, parang walang treatment, it just goes directly. So sometimes nagkakapanding, and also here, sa area na to, uh, I think, yeah, here. So, ito yung manhole na after. So, we uh, tried to capture muna and then we just use utilize this small landscape area dito and then there. So, we didn't create new landscape areas because that's the purpose of LID. We utilize the existing also landscape areas. Kasi creating, um, using the land, parang it's a challenge, ba? So, whatever it's existing, so we can make use of that. So, this one is... Uh, box filter naman, uh, applicable in parking lots. So this one is a 200 square meter parking lot before uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, before during ano rain, rainy rainy days or wet days parang the runoff just enters yung pipe small pipe so we just uh, constructed this this is not really big this is just one square meter one square meter pero one by one by one so one cubic meter lang so but as as you can see this uh kibox filter this uh, was able to reduce yung runoff dito by 80% Okay, parang ganun. So, really useful. And at the same time, uh, treatment of the run of pollutants. So, this one uh, naman, uh, infiltration garden and bioretention. So, before, it looks like this lang. And then, we constructed this one here. Okay, so this one naman uh, is what we call the rain garden. The first, the very first photo na I've shown earlier. So, this captures roof, roof deck runoff roof deck kasi yung roof deck is also impervious so everything na may impervious surfaces so yun yung purpose niya so we design a specific for that yun nga lang uh, the capital cost might be costly at the start pero we are thinking at the long term yung long term maintenance eh. yun yung yun yung, yung yun yung important so like this so meron dito yung roof deck and then may inflow pipe ayan so it goes here to this rain garden so inside the rain garden may mga uh, filter media and also my plants dyan. The roots uptake yung excess water na nandyan. Sometimes the water stays there for like few days, two to three days. So, yeah, we are uh, helping no, in also yung needs, water needs ng mga, mga vegetation or yung plants doon. So, this one is another type of planters that receives roof runoff. So we can install this in our, you know, subdivisions, mga small, small homes, kanon. So this shows uh, the effect of LID application. So I want you to look into this uh, flow rate. So this shows ito, itong graph na to. Uh, this one shows the flow rate you know, in cubic meter per hour. So this is before LID, this one. Okay, so you can see here the peaks. So nagkaroon ng two peaks after umulan. So meron siyang peak flow. This peak flow is the one that's causing the flash flood on our urban areas. Pero as soon as we apply LID, so we can see that uh, naging, uh, na-reduce yung peak flow. Halos walang naging peak flow and halos naging, uh, 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 nag-decrease yung runoff. So itong amount, yung volume na to, na in uh, galing sa runoff sa uh, initial runoff ito yung na store doon sa storage ng uh, doon sa uh, tawag ito uh, capacity or storage volume ng LID so yan yun so by reducing the flow also the pollutants sa TSS kasi yung very initial uh, runoff talagang highly polluted to with a lot of parang particles ba so na doon sa particles na sa surface area the pollutants are typically attaching on those areas. Kaya by removing the suspend the solids, by separating it from the runoff, we can also reduce yung pollutants. So TSS was reduced, like base levels na lang, also like this. So this is safe now for recharge, and at the same time, safe for uh, groundwater and discharge. Okay, so but as we know, uh, different LID types, iba-iba yung performance nila. So in terms of uh, flow control, detention, retention, filtration. So in that case, we need to check. We need to check uh, the site, investigate the site first, and then let's see uh, what the site really needs. No, we just do not apply LID because uh, we feel like, okay, uh, this LID could work here. No, so it needs research to apply LID. So it's not like it's really going to work. Some of the LIDs fail, could fail no, because of uh, improper design. So this highlights, this slide highlights the many benefits of LID, uh, like uh, improvement of air quality for climate change, mitigation, urban heat island, uh, heat stress, energy savings, because these are natural systems, groundwater recharge, with uh, in comparison to conventional. So we can see here the many, many benefits. Not only that, also economic benefits, because using LID, uh, it could, we, we do not need to provide big pipes and then also we do not need to 
uh, maintain those pipes. Kasi you, typically yung pipes could cause clogging. Parang clogging yung number one problem. Kasi all of those particles directly napupunta sa pipe. Even the garbage, di ba? And the waste. So, but the LID could uh, be useful kasi it could filter parang litters, even the litters. Sometimes we can see the accumulation of litters on the LID and you can easily remove it. Di ba? Parang ganun. So, there are really many benefits. Aside from that, uh, also the improvement of property value and aesthetic value. Kasi, di ba, uh, it could increase yung uh, real estate value yung isang area. So, how do we apply LID? So, just some examples. Okay. Mm, like this. Um, welcoming, distinctive, safe, and pleasant. So, I'm not gonna discuss further. Just, ano, Wala na time, sorry. So, uh, from facility, so we can apply it in our houses, neighborhoods, on the streets, networks, no? Um, yan. So, like this, parking lots, green areas. So, well, merong opportunity. Kaya, they are say, always saying na, we can apply LID based on parang opportunity, uh, parang opportunity basis. Parang ganun. Best opportunity basis. Kasi kung saan meron, we can, you know, uh, investigate the site and try to apply LID. So this one is uh, also showing how high point drainage works to recharge and ground our groundwater and protect the creek. Because that is one, I know, eh, parang uh, common misconception na if there is water on the surface, we have to discharge lang. But this is important. This is what we call uh, infiltration yeah, for groundwater recharge. Because we can also take some of our water source from groundwater. Most of the cities, uh, especially in rural areas, their water source comes from groundwater, diba? Kasi nag-deep well sila. So they use wells, ganun. They, they uh, pump water. So if we do not recharge and let's just abstract every time, parang what's, what's going to be, uh, uh, what, what, uh, how can we use our there's no if enough available water that we can use in the future. So that's why we have to recharge yung groundwater natin. Yun. So we can uh, infiltrate some of those water runoff. Ito naman, uh, bigger, uh, other examples, you know, LID. Ni, hindi siguro napapansin kasi parang it's part of like landscape lang. But this provides many functions. Yan. Some of the pictures like this. Ayan, on the streets neighborhood so we can we can do this even in on our on our roads and kailangan talaga may, may LID it. so we can reduce yung problem natin on flooding yun yung number one din eh. yung flows no yung peak flows na yon that could result in flash floods and also yung heat island for climate action infiltration soil formation and others okay so next last question so, is it possible to apply LID in the Philippines? So, before I answer that, I want I want you to look into these challenges in LID. So, I've been uh, doing this LID research in Korea since 2007. And I experienced many parang problems associated with LID palang construction. So, construction, cost, capital cost, manpower, some people, hindi, they are not very knowledgeable on constructing LID. May, uh, I had an experience that yung LID namin, like, uh, hindi nag-function well or like many, many issues talaga related to LID. So, it took us some time to really master yung design, yeah? And then yung ap applicability. So, kasi you will, uh, it, it will cost that much for the, for, ano, for the, construction and all that's why proper planning is important or uh, especially yung design so how much what how much uh, runoff you plan to collect in your lid now we cannot collect everything eh? we cannot do zero runoff a uh, goal so we have to at least retain some runoff naman sa surface Yun. so there are many uh, challenges that also include yung uh, design issues also, the type of vegetation na gagamitin natin, type of soil, uh, environmental condition, kasi there are many different types of soils. Some soils do not allow infiltration. Some soils uh, 
parang less uh, per, per porous or less permeable. So sometimes nagkakaroon ng soil soil amendments, ganun. And then actually uh, ito, yung topography also, precipitation like in the Philippines, uh, it's uh, varying like tremendously from climate type 1 to 4. So iba yung iba ibang characteristics. So we can just copy and then, you know, apply so for the future practices here okay so i highlight dito yung conventional versus functional let's make our landscape more functional so by means of lid and if we wanted to apply lid in the philippines probably we can think of our lid then kasi lid is practiced in the us so we can make use of our own lid uh, like tropical lid type because it's not really applied yet in tropical countries, mostly uh, temperate uh, climates, okay? And then we have to do some research. It's a good opportunity then to invite uh, students to do research on LID. And, and then sana, yeah, we could uh, generate some fun, funds for this, okay? So this one is just, I think, the last slide on the principles and on the strategies. So conventional, there's a paradigm shift na in stormwater management. So the conventional is um, replaced by what we call low impact development. Okay, and then this could help in managing our stormwater runoff, altered water circulation, not only runoff, but also for our water source. Diba? So it it, it's, it it tackles talaga eh, yung uh, six goals ng SDG. And then reducing the impacts of urbanization, we can continue to live well uh, in in LID in LID area <laughs> or watershed, and then yeah, improve the lands the function of our landscapes. So in doing this, okay, so um, not only the technical aspects are important, but also the regulations. Because okay, okay, in uh in in implementing LID, dapat there should be very strong regulation you no know, like for example on on a on a on an, a subdivision parang on a residential subdivision so dapat merong policy na LID should be incorporated so in korea new cities yung mga new cities na last smart cities lahat yun may LID so any project any project construction project let's say bridge construction road construction project lahat yun dapat may LID not only for uh, yung long-term LID, but sometimes may mga short-term LID. Kasi ba like in construction site, so maraming soil yun eh, during construction. So also they have like yung short-term LID lang for that particular time na may construction project. So dapat may LID doon to reduce yung soil. Kasi yung soil, exposed soil, uh, could result to a sediment transport sa areas natin. Yun yung nagpapaklag sa mga pipes, ba so that's why we have to manage yung soil na yon. So soil erosion also, soil erosion practices. And then for public uh, outreach, uh, people should be educated about uh, runoff and also this LID. So thank you for this uh, opportunity on this uh, session. So I, uh, I was able to give, uh, I, I was able to share this information to um, any participants. So thank you for, for attending. I think this one is the last slide. So this should be the new normal. So I know we lack more on this wastewater treatment and water treatment, but as we continue to build, urbanize our city, diba and daming projects ngayon, build, build, build projects of the government, we should incorporate LID into planning and in planning our futures, future cities, not only cities. So this LID should also be incorporated everywhere, you know, in industrial areas, agricultural areas, everywhere, kasi everywhere na may runoff. Everywhere na may runoff, runoff should also be managed. Not only yung uh, wastewater or yung for water source, but also the stormwater runoff. So that, that should be the new normal, this one. So the urban waterway. So yes, um, after several years of research, uh, we're able together with my colleagues in, in Scotland, in, in UK and Korea, so we're able to publish this book so well creation without pollution we are meaning we are you know developing eco industrial parks ecological industries and all pero it doesn't mean uh, we shouldn't think about yung pollution na magagaling dyan. so this one book 
is a, a good opportunity para to learn more about LID. I wrote four chap chapters here, including the LID and the maintenance of LID. This one is actually initially uh, my prize no, for for uh, tawag dito, students and IWA members. Pero good news kasi this one is now open access. May nag-support and this one is available as an ebook, open access ebook. So that's uh, that's it for for this talk. So I tried to really convince everyone who's here na to really think about yung ating runoff. What uh, our urban water, our urban water cycle should be or should look like. So parang sana uh, you learn from my 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 lecture and as the last word here, parting words. So the way we manage water will determine how economic development, human well-being, and environmental sustainability will be achieved. So water is an important, critical, you know, critical aspect in our environment. So that's why it shapes our our future, yung water natin. So let's try to all together help in managing our waters. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for that, Doc Marla. Yeah, so I'm sure a lot of people are interested with this um, LID technology. And we do have some questions already in the chat box. So let me start with uh, the first ones. We still have a few minutes to go through the questions. This comes from Dr. Raymond Tan. So thank you so much for your excellent talk. Would you know of case studies of applications of LID to retrofit cities with historical investments in non-sustainable infrastructure? I think a major obstacle for many mega cities, just like Manila, is the pre-existing infrastructure. Yes. Yeah, actually, um, ideally, you know, LID is uh, applicable in new development projects. So yun talaga yung ideal, kasi retrofitting and redevelopment, parang it will cost that much money. So that's why yun yung suggestion. But it's possible. Is still possible as long as we can see after investigation, uh, site investigation, and also yung mga hydrological analysis. If we, uh, based on that, if we believe that there's a need for the management, because first of all, we check eh, if, uh, and as an example, sa Japan, so since sobrang linis, like they are managing already their environment well, they are even vacuuming their. Uh, particles, uh, street particles and street dust, talagang walang makikita. So there's no need for LID, parang ganon. Pero that is for the quality purposes. Pero we have to define yung objectives. So is that objective for uh, managing the quality? We need LID. For for the quantity, there are other ways, parang ganon. So basically, when we say LID, uh, we apply it if there's a need and there's an opportunity. So I think, yeah, I think it's possible naman. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we have three questions coming from uh, Angelita Pangilinan. So the first one, regarding porous infiltration, is it related or not prone to the liquefaction of the underlying layers? The second question is, for LIDs, are there any criteria for the selection of plants to use? And then finally, are there ways to estimate the effects of LIDs to choose which would be the best one to fit in an particular area. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yung first question, that's true. That's why uh we have to work with uh parang yung soil experts then kasi that happened to one of our sites nagkaroon ng ganun. One of our permeable pavement site uh nagkaroon din ng ganun. And then I think a major uh parang reason doon is yung uh, compaction ng soil and yung soil type kasi not all types of soil, pwedeng mag-work yung LID. Minsan, hindi pwede. So, ABCD type, yung iba uh, hindi nakaka-infiltrate or yung iba nagsustore more water. So, that's why we have to check very well yung sa infiltration. And another thing, siguro, uh, we should uh, check kung how much water we want to keep. Kasi may limit naman eh. Yung infiltration, di ba? So, may limit ang infiltration and may infiltration capacity yung soil. So, we should not let na lang siguro ma-exceed ma yun, yung capacity. Ayun, yun yung nagiging problem. And then, yung second question is about plants, right? I'm sorry, nakalimutan. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, right yung yeah another problem yan. Kasi we 
had an experience na parang kung ano-anong plants nilagay, parang nag-experiment kami doon, and hindi nag-work. So some plants, they really hate storm water runoff. So that's why, kailangan din natin mag-work with, you know, yung sino ba yung involved dyan sa mga plants na yan. yan sila, kailangan talaga natin mag-involve or to test. No, sometimes uh pero there are common pa- plants and species of plants na pwedeng gamitin uh, but not everything not all of the plants work especially yung mga plants na very deep rooted or iba-iba sa roots eh, diba? so iba yung growth nila so some plants uh, nagugrow sila laterally diba yung iba uh, iba yung growth so yun yung isang concern so in choosing the plants and vegetation uh, critical yan sa LID Okay, and then yung last part is for estimating the effects. How do you est- is there a way to estimate the effects of LID so that you can choose which one would be the best to fit an area? Ah uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually uh every type of LID yung pinakita ko kanina, may mga reported ano na yon, uh, uh like percent reduction ganun. Pero meron calculation for this. Uh also we th- right now we are doing modeling on this LID. So yun yung yun yung parang pinaka kaya medyo kaya pang gawin pero that's not gonna be like the same in real situation kasi minsan even though you model it pag inapply na namin parang iba yung nangyayari like some of our systems yung sa school we design it like to capture 25 mm of rainfall dapat every time pero minsan 10 mm pa lang puno na parang ganun so it's not only yung quantity eh, but yung intensity kasi ng rain so mas okay kung yung rain kaya it depends on the ano Uh, hydrology and topography of the site. So, careful analysis. Pero, that's possible. Pero, before um, niya, niya i-pilot yung LID, kailangan, kailangan din talaga, I mean, i-full scale, kailangan din talaga din siyang i-pilot. Especially, our country has a very different uh, characteristics. Eh. Most of the, the, the manuals, yung design manuals, marami. You can see, you can see online, US, they are providing manuals. But, We cannot just follow kasi that's what we did. And then hindi hindi siya ganoon nag nagwo-work agad. So carefully p- careful planning talaga. It's important. 'Yon. 'Yon 'yon. And then kailangan uh, LID won't work by itself. So without drainage system kasi we have to connect 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 it with the mm-hmm. drainage system, 'di ba? So 'yon, kailangan first of all may drain existing drainage system which is yun yung challenging na part din kasi we don't have drainage system ibang areas wala pang drainage system, right? So kung LID lang and without drainage system hindi enough. So kailangan talaga uh, combination. So maraming kailangan i-consider. Okay, thank you. So the next one comes from Crispian Lau. So he says that the challenge in a developing country like the Philippines is the lack of infrastructure, particularly in sewage treatment systems and meeting the set effluent standards of wastewater discharge. How can we integrate LID and educate stakeholders and implementers, particularly the LGUs, um, development councils, and private land developers? Uh, okay, there's an... So, yeah, I, I think I can okay. see naman sa chat. Yan ba yun nasa chat? Yeah, I can yes, see yes. naman. Yeah, um, that's also that's that's also the challenge. Because when we first introduced LID in Korea, hesitant talaga ang government na to accept this LID new technology. Eh. Parang yung idea is ano ba yan? Actually, yung first ever naming uh, site, yung infiltration trench sa school, parang the president of the university parang didn't allow us to construct yung LID na yon. Pero yung ano yung persistence namin sa so yung research talaga sabi namin we're just gonna do it for research purposes and once we started presenting facts and evidence yung as a result of research doon lang sila medyo naniwala pa rin. and then eventually um our campus our campus is the very first parang LID campus in Korea we call our campus green campus so we develop materials talaga so like effort in developing brochures and developing materials and then giving it to people or especially to the government and presenting it so most of the time we are uh, submitting papers to local conferences and events suppose we are introducing slowly yung uh, ginagawa namin so through that yung mga ganun the start na na recognize even the ministry of environment visited and He he he. Uh, the Ministry of Environment even gave us an award, like a national award for the the technology na na develop naman. So parang yon nagstart na. And right now, um, it's not on the slide. Pero most of the cities na in Korea nag LID na sila. Like 
almost lahat ng city yun yung plan. So, nagkaroon na rin ng uh, support, nag-change yung funding. Like, from a small percentage, nilakihan nila yung funding for for like non-point source, for runoff, management. And yung kaninang pinakita ko na graph ng BOD and COD, yun, yun yung isa sa mga nag-ano din sa kanila, nag-push. So, we have to push policymakers in, into applying LID and by providing yung mga benefits na dapat quantifiable. So, we have to show them. And then, aside from environmental yeah. benefits, quantified yeah. economic, yes. Yes. We are also doing this study now. So, one of my MS students is doing this um, economic study. Kasi ang, ang comparison nito is yung maintenance cost ng pipes. Diba? The pipes, if, pagka kasi we increase the land and urbanization, dadami yung runoff. Yun yung tendency, diba? So, we increase the pervious surface. So, it means the pipe, we should make it bigger and bigger. So, ganun yung nagiging trend. The pipes are getting bigger and bigger. And until when? Until what what ano, range? Hanggang, hanggang sa natin papalakihin yung pipes. So it's not sustainable. So using LID, we can support yung pipe. Kahit the pipe can be designed like for 50 years without even increasing yung yung size. Ang hirap kayang mag-pipe plate, tanggalin yung pipe, ibalik, diba? So LID could support, supplement. Kaya doon namin na persuade yung mga ganun um, ideas. And then, dapat talaga may pub publications or may, may evidence. Yun. So, yun. So, yeah, okay. pag malaki ang capital cost ng LID compared yeah. to traditional lang na landscape. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can go to the question of Professor Biswajit, who's also actually from Korea. Um, Hi. <laughs> so, he has a concern about LID. How can it solve the problem of green water storage and distribution? Green water storage. What is yes. water storage? So maybe that is is it is it runoff storage? Yes. Um. Actually, uh, we have to design the hydraulic retention time because when we are storing runoff, we can store it like for months, weeks and months. So dapat meron lang around less than three days or like may specific lang na retention time yung LID don. Kaya we cannot over design LID. Because if that's the case, kapag may standing water, it could lead to you know, insects, yung mga ganun, odor, yung mga ganun. So, we cannot let the, that, that is still polluted water eh. So, we have to design it talaga na magmamatch. We have to, uh, I think, uh, foreign, no? no, hindi pwedeng tagal. <laughs> so, we have to design it to match yung existing conditions of the site. That is the the way. So, we have to make sure na all of the water is captured and then, we have to regulate how much we can infiltrate, how much we infiltrate, how much we release. No, kasi hindi pwedeng uh, yung design natin talaga is to ano parang over over design. Ganun. With this, with regards to the use, actually we we have a study on that inside our campus. Na before kasi yung LID ginagamit lang siya for storage, de ba? So now we think of ways on how to. Um, parang reuse yung storm water that is captured by the LID. So we thought of like using it for irrigation purposes on green areas. Parang ganun. So yung mga ibang existing na mga grasses, we can make use of that. So after, like for example, in the house, after capturing yung runoff from the deck or from the roof sky, anong klaseng roof yan, um, we can capture yung, yung rain rainwater non and then later on gamitin niya for irrigation purposes. So yun. Okay, so design it you. properly. Yeah. Thank you for that, Doc Marla. So, Guru, we can take just last two more questions. The first one is from Ella of Ebsu. So what type of LID can you suggest to construct in the Philippines? And have you tried creating pilot projects in 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 the Philippines? And what were your main challenges? Okay. So what type of LID? Uh again, so there is no like uh parang single LID for a specific area. So first, we have to do site analysis. Pero in the Philippines, uh, I think since, sige, i-divide ko na lang siya. So for those areas na highly parang uh, in, high high intense land use, meaning maraming, maraming mga transportations or ganon, I do not recommend permeable pavement. Kasi permeable pavement uh, is really prone to clogging. And if yung particles natin in the Philippines, even our rain rain particles, malalaki, di ba? So if we use permeable pavement, it's not gonna really help a lot. Ang problema doon, after few weeks or few days construction, magkaklag yun agad. So yun yung experience ko. So uh, siguro may mga, wag lang tayong gagamitin. But the rest, other LID we can try. 
So, I think one of the parang useful dyan, yung mga tree boxes sa mga trees. Kasi the our trees, uh, mas maganda may nakakulong sila sa box eh. So, para dun papasok. Kasi I, uh, what I observe, yung mga trees, especially pag sobrang lumalaki na, yung roots nila, gumagapang siya sa pavement, and then nagka-crack yung pavement, ba diba? Kasi they're looking for some water source or nutrient source. So, mas okay kung we direct the runoff to them. So, parang ganun. And then, with regard to pilot project, that's um our goal, actually. So, we've been doing like research on the analysis now on the site. And then, uh, project, um, problem rin talaga na ngayon is funding. So, yung funding and also yung people who's going to work. Kasi, di ba, LID construction is different. So, parang we need parang train. Actually, ang mahal nga ng ano eh, in Korea, ang mahal ng LID construction workers. Parang ganon. So, it uh, it costs like really a lot of money for for the workers. So, we need more workers then na trained to do the LID construction. Pero we we can start, no? We can start with that. Uh, a pilot project would would be ano, parang it's it's good to start with a pilot project. The challenges, I think it was listed if ever. This one I wrote it based on my experience in yeah, this one. I wrote it based on my experience in uh, Korea. So, these photos actually sa France to eh. Ito yung nandito. Sa right side when I visited France sa Lyon, France. So they have this LID sa gitna, di ba? So it it doesn't consume that much. Pero ayan, ito yung mga challenges. Actually, ma medyo madami siya. Ayun, sige. Thank you for that. We'll have the final question from Miss Denise. So she wants to ask, how does LID interrelate with ground subsidence? Maybe not just in Manila, but in other parts of the world. Uh, I am not very familiar with it. That's a soil type. So it, it, ano, it concerns talaga the type of the soil. Uh, and then also yung, I think, it, uh, di ba, some areas natin very close to the coast. So, ibang strategy doon ng LID. Kasi there are LIDs that are parang applicable in urban areas. There, we have also what we call coastal LIDs. We have also called uh, agricultural LIDs, parang ganun. So I think uh, with regards to this, I'm not really sure because I'm not very familiar, pero maybe we can uh, do some studies on this one. Kasi hindi, hindi siya masyadong ganun. Uh, I think in some studies, hindi siya ganun na-highlight. Mm -hmm. okay. So questions from the audience, but I saw that you your email address at the end of the slide. Maybe can we go yeah. to that again? Um, so for those of you who are interested to get in touch with Doc Marla, um, you may email her and maybe you can also get a copy of her book to get additional details regarding mm -hmm. LID technologies. Thank you for that, Doc Marla. Um, now I'd like to share my screen. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so thank you everyone again for joining us this morning. So I'd like to invite you all for our next talk, which is scheduled on September 29. It will be on a slightly different schedule because some of our speakers will be from Barcelona. And so we'll have it at 7 p.m. Philippine Standard Time. And we'll talk about exploring sustainable sensor-based smart city services. This talk is in cooperation with the Advanced Research Institute for Informatics, Computing, and Networking, or ADRIC, which is also hosted in DLSU. So our speakers will be Dr. Judith Escaraga, Dr. Francesc Alias, who is from the Sal Ramon Llull University, and Dr. Conrado Ruiz. So kindly register at bit.ly slash DLSU09, or you may scan the QR code that you can see here. So for the evaluation form for this particular lecture, you may go to bit.ly slash cert underscore DLSU08 or scan this QR code. Um, and in addition to that, our lectures are uploaded in our YouTube channel. So if you want to watch our previous lectures, please visit our YouTube channel and subscribe. So that's all. Thank you very much, everyone. And have a great day ahead. Thank you, Marla. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh